So welcome, today we will be talking about database transactions. So transactions if you remember are the one logical units of programs that lets one uh, transfer money from one bank account to the other, uh, lets one buy uh, rail tickets etc. So this is about database transactions. So the concept of transactions we will cover it in multiple sessions. But one thing to remember is that a transaction is not a program or a part of the database, it is a logical unit of a program. So it is a logical unit of a database function, so logical unit of a database uh, operation. So some particular set of operations can be said to be constituting a transaction. So the complete operation of, uh, for example, the complete operation of moving money from transferring money from one bank account to the other is the, uh, is can be called a transaction. So only that part may be declared as a transaction within the database operations. So transactions have uh, four very, very important properties. These are called the asset properties and this is a very famous term. So that uh, probably you have heard in the context of databases, these are called the asset properties. So what are the asset properties? The first property in that asset thing is A, A stands for atomicity. So the atomicity of a transaction, the atomicity of a transaction essentially says that either the transaction has completely happened or it has not happened at all. So that means in this banking transaction scenario, either the money has been transferred from A's account to B's account completely or it has not happened at all. Now what do I mean by completely? See the transfer of money from A to B consists of two uh, operations, two basic operations, debiting money from A's account and crediting to B's account. Now it cannot happen that only the debit part has gone through or only the credit part has gone through. Either both have succeeded or both have failed. So that is the atomicity of transactions. The next property is the C part which is called the consistency. So the transactions should not change the consistent order of a database. So if the database was consistent to start with before the transaction started, it should be consistent after the transaction has entered. So the consistency property for example for this uh, bank account scenario may be that the, the, uh, the total amount of money in A's account and B's account is something which was constant. Now after the transaction that should not be changing. So if uh, uh, so suppose A it started off with 1000 rupees and B had 500 rupees and then 100 rupees was transferred. So the initial amount in A plus B was 1500 and it should still remain 1500. So the database should be in the consistent state. This is just an example and then there are other ways of actually defining what consistency is but that is the property called consistency. The next property is the isolation. And this we uh, discussed a little bit uh, towards the beginning of the course, but essentially this means that multiple transactions may be executing concurrently, but the effect on each one of them is as if this is oblivious of any other transaction. So, so each transaction is uh, apparently happening in isolation of the other transaction. So the example is that suppose A is transferring money to B and C is transferring money to D. Now this should not interfere with each other. And the effect of whether C is transferring money to D has succeeded or failed has got no effect on the transfer of money from A to B and vice versa. So that is called an isolation. And the fourth property is the durability. So the durability part is that if a transaction finishes successfully, then the effects of the transaction must be durable or must be permanent. So after this transfer of money has been happened and if the transaction has succeeded uh, uh, successfully that is, even if the database crashes or there are other problems in other transactions or there are other issues, this transfer of money is deemed to be permanent. So if A's account has been debited and B's has been credited, after the database again comes up or again the database is being operated amount, the new, the new state should reflect that A's money has been debited and B's has been uh, credited. So this is the durability. Once it happens, 
it remains, it is permanent. So, these are the four important properties of transaction and together these are called the acid properties and this is very, very important to understand what the acid property is. Now, to define a little bit more of the transaction, as I said, this is a logical unit of a program and the basic two operations of transaction is read and write. Now, what does a transaction read or write? A transaction is said to read or write something called a named item. Now, what is a named item? A named item is essentially any uh, logical unit of data can be a named item. So, for example, a, a bank account the with the particular account number, the account may be a named item. So, and in other uh, examples, a complete ticket in the ticketing system that may be a named item or etcetera, etcetera. So, when we are studying database transactions, we will forget whether the database is in the relational mode or any other mode, uh, relational uh, for model or any other mode. All we will see is that the database is consisting of some named items, that is all. Now, the named item as I said is one logical unit of the data and there may be named items that are covering, uh, so the, the named items may be subsets of each other, etcetera, but that we will not uh, consider here. So, for the transaction model that we will uh, uh, study, we will just say that there are named items. So, the database is just simply a collection of named items and the transaction either reads a named item or writes a named item. So, if the named item is suppose x, then there are two operations either it reads x or it writes to x that is it. Now, the granularity of this named item may be a block, may be a page, may be the entire database, may be a table, etcetera, but that does not matter. All we are concerned about is the named item and transactions are independent of how you define the named items. It is essentially independent of the granularity in which a named item is defined. So, these are the two basic operations of read and write and using this, so just to note that x is the named item variable. So, x denotes the variable for a named item and that is all that is there. And now, with this read and write, there may be conflicts for read and write. And we all know what the three basic types of conflicts are. The first one is read after write, then this is write after read and the third one is write after write. So, this just to complete, this is read after write. So, when does this read after write conflict happens is that when there are two or more transactions that uh, reads. So, so, there are two transactions, two or more transactions, one of them reads and the other writes and then whatever the reading, whenever the first transaction tries to read, it should read the value before the second transaction has written. So, that is a read after write conflict and then similarly there is a write after read conflict and we will go over these conflicts in much more detail later. But this is basically these three conflicts are essentially saying which operations can conflict. Now, note that very importantly there is no read after read conflict. There is no read after read conflict because if there are two transactions that are reading the same item so the x, it does not matter in which order they read, both of them reads the same value, none of them changes the value of the uh, uh, item. So, it does not matter which order they read. So, it is not a conflict. So, so, the transactions 1 and transaction 2 even if they read the same item, it is not a conflict, but otherwise whenever there is a write operation involved in it, which is this read after write, write after read or uh, write after write, these there may be conflicts because the reading and writing has to go in the correct order, otherwise the read value or the written value may be wrong and we will go over this in much more detail now. But uh, this is essentially the concept of what the conflicts are. Before we go over the conflicts, let us complete to uh, one example of the transaction to understand this acid property. So, suppose this transfer of money from A's account to B's account. So, transfer of money from A to B, this is the example, this is the transaction that we are doing. Now, what are the properties that matters is that the first thing is how do we denote this transaction? The way to denote this transaction is that what will happen is that the amount so, whatever amount is in the A's account that will be rate. So, that is the first operation called rate. Then suppose A's account will be debited by let us say 100 or this thing is being debited from the A's account. So, that is the new value of A becomes this thing. Now, this new value needs to be written. So, this is the write A. Then similarly this read 
the B's account will be read that will be enhanced with that amount 100 and then there will be a write to this B. So, this is the complete description of the transaction in this manner and now we see let us see what is the idea of atomicity. The first thing is how do we define atomicity? Very simply if this happens then this must happen or if this does not happen then this does not happen. So, atomicity as, as I have been saying that either A's account is debited and B's account is credited or none of them has happened. It cannot that only one of them has happened that is the atomicity. Otherwise you see what the problem is the bank can either take away money indefinitely or generate money indefinitely. So, both of which are problems of course. So, the atomicity ensures that uh, those problems do not happen. So, that is the part about atomicity. Now, consistency, consistency is uh, something about the semantic is that now you see 100 rupees is taken from A and that the same 100 rupees is deposited to B. So, that is why the sum of A plus B remains constant after the transaction is happening. If 100 rupees were taken from A and only 90 rupees or 110 rupees were accredited to B, then that the consistency may suffer. So, the consistency has to be defined what is exactly the consistency criterion. Here, the criterion is that the a total amount of money in A's and B's account is constant. So, that is being maintained. So, that is the consistency part. Next comes the isolation. So, the isolation essentially is that if there is another transaction that either reads A or reads B, then to that transaction, now this is a little bit different concept from what we have been describing in isolation. So, if there is another transaction that either reads A or reads B, then that transaction should be oblivious of what is happening in this thing. So, either it must read the value before any of these two operations have taken places or it must read the value after both of these operations have taken places. So, that is the effect that is the, that is the way to uh, ensure isolation, but isolation essentially means is that uh, the other transaction does not need to know that there is another transaction going on here and it is does not care whether this transaction what stage this transaction is whether it has succeeded or failed. So, that is the isolation property. So, that is the thing about isolation and the finally, the thing is about uh, durability, the last uh, thing is about durability. Now, if B's account has been credited and, and B has been sent up a notice by the through SMS or whatever it is and then the database crashes etcetera, after the database recovers, it should not be that B is seeing less money, B should see the ref, the new money, the, the new, new uh, balance should be reflected in B's account no matter what after the transaction has been completed. So, after the transaction is completed there is a generally a signal given, there is generally a state which is declared saying the transaction has suc uh, completed successfully and after that it should be durable, it should not, it cannot be reversed. Okay. So, that is the point of transactions. Now, the transactions may end up in certain problems, there may be certain problems in transactions. So, the first problem is called the problem of lost update. So, what essentially is lost update is that suppose there are two transactions that are both writing to the same data item. So, what may happen is that the update by the first transaction may be overwritten by the update of the second uh, transaction. So, the essentially the update that is done by the first uh, transaction is lost because it has been superseded by some another transaction. So, that is the lost update problem. The second problem is the temporary update. This is also sometimes called the dirty read. So, what the dirty read problems is that suppose a transaction writes to a particular data item. So, suppose the previous example transaction writes the new value to A and then it fails before B is being updated. So, then as we have been saying the atomicity should guarantee that A should roll back to the original amount. Now, before this rollback happens, suppose there is another transaction that reads the value of A. So, that is a dirty read. Why it is a dirty read? Because the value that is read is a new value which is dirty because the transaction that updated the value of A has not yet committed. So, there is a uh, concept of committing committing meaning essentially completing successfully that has not yet done correctly that has not yet completed correctly, but another transaction has come and read that value. So, the update in the first case is a temporary because the transaction has not yet said that this update is correct and it has not gone through completely. So, the update has been temporary, but another transaction reads it. So, that is why it is called a temporary update or the dirty read problem. And the third problem is called an incorrect 
summary. So the incorrect summary problem is that suppose one of the transactions is just trying to find out the aggregate or some aggregate operation on all the bank accounts etc. And what may happen is that it reads A and then A is changed. So the the so the statistics or the aggregate that the first transaction computes is wrong because A has changed. So by the time the first transaction finishes the aggregate, A has changed. But the value that it shows up as the let us say the sum of the accounts of A and B, etc., or the average, etc., will be wrong because it has read something wrongly. So that's an incorrect summary. The summarization that it provides, the essentially the aggregation, etc., is wrong. And this happens because of the temporary update or the data date problem, but this is another uh, very common problem that the database practitioners faced earlier when they were uh, looking at transactions. Okay. So that is all that is fine, but next the question comes is why would transactions fail? So what are the causes of failure? So why would transactions fail? Now of course the first very simple way to understand is that there is a crash. So, there is a system crash that is it. So, either the power of that database machine has gone or there is some some error, some exception happened etcetera. So, the memory is lost or all those things happen. So, there is a system crash that is fine. Then there is a system error. So, how can error happen? Is that suppose A has 1000 rupees and it is trying to transfer 2000 rupees, it cannot, right? That is an error, that is a logical error, though that is nothing wrong in that uh, in the sense of read write operations from the transaction. So, but that is an error and the transaction has cannot succeed in uh, any way. So, because there is no way that 2000 rupees can be transferred out of 1000 rupees, and there can be other program errors such as division by 0, etcetera, but that is a system error. And again, I mean, this division by 0, etcetera, can also be called which is called this exception. So, there may be many other ex kinds of exception etc. So, insufficient uh, account balance etc. So, these two are mostly the same the system error or exception. Then the fourth one is that there is a concurrency. So, we will define concurrency and all those things carefully, but so the error that happens is because of trying to enforce the concurrency and this is happening because of something called a deadlock. We will see this uh, definition of deadlock, etc., definition of concurrency in much more detail later. But the idea is the following is that transaction 1 requests to read some data item B, which has been updated by transaction 2, and transaction 2 reads to needs to read transaction A, some, some, uh, some data item A that has been written by transaction 1. So, very simply, transaction 1 depends on transaction 2 and transaction 2 depends on transaction 1. So, there is a deadlock, meaning nobody can proceed without the other completing, but nobody can complete either. So, the system essentially stops and none of the transactions can finish and none of the transactions can therefore finish successfully. So, that is a deadlock and we will define this much more in much more detail later, but that is one. Then of course, system crash then I mean the, the system crash can be memory failure. This is generally a memory failure and of course, there can be a disk crash. The entire database has crashed that is uh, this thing. So, these must take care of the durability issue. So, if the database crashes, the durability can be hampered. So, there may be problem with the transaction then. So, that is the thing. And then there may be, I mean, other physical problems, I mean, fire or theft, etc., whatever physical. Uh, th th this is essentially why the transactions may be failing. But the important things is the disk crash or the system crash and these two, and then this is we will study much more.